This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Hiya! Today we're... <laughs> Welcome back to my channel, everyone, where we're always very serious. Today we're talking about the strengths of each of the 16 personalities. What are their biggest strengths? But I think maybe a better way of phrasing it is, what is like the thing they do in autopilot, the thing that they just naturally flow into all the time without even realizing it? What is their life all about? Because your personality type does not indicate any inherent skill or ability. It's just talking about what do you feel really comfortable doing like all the time, maybe without even realizing you're doing it. But first, before we jump into this video, I gotta tell you about this video sponsor, Squarespace, making the Frank James possible. <laughs> Now, you guys have heard me talk about Squarespace before. It's an all-in-one online platform so you can build a beautiful, stunning website. Frank, why would I want a website, you might well ask. Well, maybe you have a blog or a small business or you just want to create a special little place on the internet that's all your own, representing who you are. Squarespace is super intuitive to use. You just find a template you like, you pick it, you start customizing it, you can drag and drop elements around the page. You don't need a map in design in order to make this thing work for you and have a stunning website. They have video blocks so you can embed videos on your page. Squarespace also allows you to have multiple contributors so you can get your friends in on the action. And you can get a traffic overview so you can get important analytics about who's visiting your website, where are they coming from, stuff you want to know. So go to squarespace.com right now, get a free trial, and then when you're ready to step it up a notch, go to squarespace.com slash Frank James, get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. All right, so now let's get on to the strengths of the 16 personalities or if you prefer, what are the 16 personalities doing all the time that they may not even be aware of? I haven't figured out what I'm going to name this video yet. So grab a beverage of choice, make sure you put a lot of ice in it like I do and let's get going. Let's start with the introverted thinkers, so the ISTPs and INTPs. The thing that they are doing all the time is they are looking at everything in life as a puzzle to be put together, to be solved. They are always looking for problems that need answers. They're always analyzing and, you know, putting everything through the supercomputer of their minds. But here's the thing about introverted thinkers, the INTP and ISTP, is that it's not just like, let me find the answer. No, they, they want to understand every part of it. It's not just, let me put this puzzle together. It's, let me understand why this puzzle piece is going here and, oh, this is what's going on here. I see that. This is how they all fit together. Look at how every single little bit of it works. They need to own the puzzle for themselves. That's why these types are very deep thinkers that just like to take a problem like a ball of yarn and totally unwind it and get like every little bit of that problem solved for themselves. And they don't want anyone else's help in figuring it out. I mean, okay, maybe if you have a good idea, they might listen to you if they determine that what you're saying is smart, but for the most part, it's all them. They want to figure it out for themselves. Now, the slight difference between these two types, the ISTPs, they're doing it with a focus on what can I prove in the real world? What are the facts that I can look to to really prove this? Whereas the INTPs, they're looking at what are the concepts that I know that are out there? What are the connections I can see that really makes sense to me? And then that's how I'm going to solve the problem. So they're looking at, they're going about solving their problems kind of in two different ways. One focusing on the facts, one focusing on the patterns. Next, we're gonna look at the other thinkers, the extroverted thinkers, the ESTJ and ENTJ, because they are also trying to solve problems. They're trying to get some answers in life. You know what I'm saying? But they go about it in a very different way than the introverted thinkers, the INTP and ISTP. So whereas those types we talked about first are very much trying to own every little piece of the puzzle that they're putting together for themselves, the extroverted thinkers are like, I don't care about that. I just want to get this done. Can we just get to the solution, please? Let's just slap this together. Does it look good? Okay, I think this is right. Boom, let's move on. I guess you could look at it as the introverted thinkers are very interested in the process of how we get to the answer 
spectrum, whereas the extroverted thinkers, ENTJ and ESTJ, are really just focused on let's get to the answer, let's make sure it works, let's get it done. We don't have to be like sloppy about it, though I think the extroverted thinkers can be a little bit more sloppy because they just, they just want it to work, right? They don't necessarily need to be meticulous about it, I guess is what I'm saying. If it works, that's fine. I don't need to fully understand every little aspect of it. And they don't, and in, and they're also pinging off of people around them to see like, does this make sense to you? How do you think this would work? What would you do? And so then the ENTJ and ESTJ are like, okay, that seems like a good idea. Let's try it out. Okay, that seems dumb. Not gonna do that. Okay, this one thing we tried out was stupid. We're not doing that. Oh, but this thing over here, that is working, we're gonna go with that idea, good job. Because the extroverted thinkers aren't trying to do this for themselves necessarily, they, so they can poll the audience. Because they, as I said many times before, they just wanna get to what is correct, what is the right answer, how do we solve the puzzle, and if we have to ask a bunch of people, all the dummies around us, what they think, they'll do that. And just a reminder, that's what these types are doing all the time. The slight difference here, the ENTJs are doing it in this way where they're really looking at uh, kind of like the system overall. Like how do we answer things and how do we kind of set up a more intuitive system of getting there whereas the ESTJs are more like, let's look at the exact procedure of how to get there. And before we continue, let's stop momentarily and see if YouTube would like to show a commercial. Thanks for sitting through that and supporting this channel. And hey, if you're enjoying this video, do a backflip out the window. Or if that's too dangerous, just you just hit the like button. That, that would be fine. Okay, then next up, let's move to the feelers. We'll look at the introverted feelers first. The INFPs and ISFPs. The thing that they're doing all the time without perhaps even realizing it is they have this like internal litmus test of do I like stuff? Do I think it's good or not? They are really forging a path through life and in some ways they're similar to the introverted thinkers like life needs some answers but to them they're not trying to solve these things logically. They're trying to get there in, in this feelings way of like, what am I drawn towards? What feels good? What feels right and correct for me? And I mean, that could just be as simple as what do I like, what do I not like? The other thing about the introverted feelers is that they have very deep feelings. I mean, very deep feelings. Like you can't even understand it unless you are an introverted feeler. But it's really only about the things that they have deep feelings for because introverted functions like this, they're very deep, but they're also narrow, like they're only focusing on certain things, right? So when these types really get latched onto something, when their introverted feeling gets attached to it and they're feeling it, it, it's very deep and they get very drawn towards those things. These types are always asking themselves what matters to me in this situation. Like that's how they make decisions. What is more important than the other thing? How do I determine for myself what is important to me? And they don't need anyone else's input. They don't need other people telling them, oh, you, well, you should care about that. They're like, no, I'll care about what I wanna care about. Thank you. The, the difference between these two types here is the ISFP, they're very much aware of the physical, concrete, real world and the facts and things like that. Whereas the INFPs are more in the realm of concepts and so that's where their introverted feeling can be drawn. So the ISFPs, that's why they're stereotyped a lot of times as being artists because it's like they're drawn, their introverted feeling is drawn to the beauty and things like that in the real world. Whereas the INFPs, their introverted feeling is being drawn to things more in the abstract realm, things that aren't quite on the surface, looking at the connections between things that maybe aren't always obvious. And that's why INFPs can be stereotypically poets. Oh boy, I might need a refill of my soda pop. Okay, so I spilled some soda on me, so we're gonna do a quick costume change. So we're talking next about the extroverted feeling types, the ESFJ and ENFJ. And much like those introverted feelers that we just talked about, they too are going through life trying to figure out what matters and what has value, like placing things on the ladder of valuable to not valuable. Let's figure that out. Stuff that's good, stuff that's bad. But uh, unlike 
the INFP and ISFP, instead of looking inward, these two types are looking outward. And so they're doing much the same thing that those extroverted thinkers are doing, the ENTJ and the ESTJ are doing. You're seeing these patterns, I bet, between all the different types. That's the thing about the 16 personalities. There are none that are just entirely unique unto themselves. There's always overlap with other types. So these two types, the ESFJ and ENFJ, they are trying to figure out objectively in the outer world what is good, what is bad, what matters, what doesn't matter, what uh, people like, what people don't like, and they're asking people questions all the time to figure that out. If you go, <laughs> if you go to my video, what I hate about the 16 personalities, you'll see that what I said about the EJs is, they're always asking me questions. Can they please stop? It's annoying. And the reason they do it is because they're in this zone that they don't even realize where they're just constantly trying to figure out the value of stuff. An ESFJ or ENFJ might ask me, what did you think about that soda pop you were drinking? Was it good? Was it bad? What was the brand? Let me know so that I can kind of log this away in my mind, what you think of this, and then I'll compare it with what other people think about this. And so generally that gets an objective view of if this soda is good or not. Because for these types, it is on them. They feel responsible to know that stuff, to understand how people feel about things. They're kind of doing this math, if this emotional math, if you will. If this many people feel this way about this thing, then that must be generally what everyone will feel about it at scale. And then of course the slight differences here are that the ENFJ is looking at things in that more intuitive way to kind of figure out the patterns of what people like and like how that all fits together. Whereas the ESFJs are really just looking at exactly what the things are and then how we can do those things in the sensory that people like. So that's why the ENFJ can be more of a stereotype of some kind of guru, you know, they're a bit more spiritually uh, oriented, whereas the ESFJ has kind of the stereotype as the person who's just like, hey, I'll take care of you, whatever. You come over to my house, I'll cook you a big meal. Next up, we go to the introverted sensors, the ISTJ and the ISFJ. The introverted sensors are all about the real world the facts, the stuff that's actually, you know, happening in reality, but they are, they are very narrowed down in their vision of these things. The introverted sensor types are very much in the flow when they are able to organize things. So for an example, if you've ever been in a play before, there's something called a prop table backstage and you know, props, just you know, going to theater 101 here. If you walk on stage as an actor and you have a book in your hand or you have, you know, a gun or something, those are props, things that the actors use. And the prop table is where all of those props live. And on that table, it's taped out so that every prop goes in a specific place on the table and it's all labeled and stuff and it always has to go there. That is introverted sensing in a nutshell. But it's not just like physical things, it's also keeping the facts straight, keeping the numbers lined up in a way that is easy to look at and make sense of. I think really these two types are trying to just avoid disorder at all costs. And they both really take ownership of those things that they are organizing, whether it is like the physical items on the prop table, or if it is those uh, data things in the spreadsheet, data things. What? <laughs> I think for these two types, it's all about, can we just keep things straightforward? Can we get the most out of our stuff if we keep it organized, if we keep it all lined up, and if we have a procedure and don't have to deal with the chaos of new stuff. And then the differences between these two types, the ISFJs, you know, the stereotype there is that they are nurses. And that's because, I mean, what do nurses do? They're taking care of people. They got that feeling aspect there. And to be in medicine, to be a nurse, you've got to like be very organized. You got to be on top of all of that procedure. You do this, you do this in the real world. The ISTJ is more logical. You know, they're uh, more stereotypically like in the accounting finance world where it's a bunch of numbers we're dealing with. It's like, how do we just make all this stuff work out? How do we make the balance sheet balance, etc.? We're not worrying about how people feel. And before we continue, let's stop momentarily and see if YouTube would like to show a commercial. 
Next up, we go to the extroverted sensor, ESTP, ESFP, and these types are also focused on the real world like those last types we talked about. However, there is a difference. Rather than look at the concrete world in that very structured way as the last types, ESTP and ESFP just want to look at the world as it is, unfiltered, what's obvious, what's happening. That's all we're looking at. We're not trying to like group it, organize it, we're just taking it as it comes. I think these types are always kind of looking for clarity. They are looking to dispel any kind of ambiguity or any kind of, you know, guesswork. They just want to say, well, what is obvious? What is in front of us? Let's just look at that. And what that leads them to do a lot of the time without them even realizing it is that they're just looking for new experiences. Let me just see what this thing is all about. Okay, let me go over here. Let me do this thing. That's why stereotypically they get bored easily. And so because they have this wide view of the world, trying to just take it in as it is and as it's coming at them, it makes them like very grounded in reality. They're not doing like the introverted sensors and getting super hyper focused on something and being like, oh, look at this little thing. I'm, I'm just gonna focus on this for a while. They're, they're always, they'll be like, okay, that's cool. Now moving on. So if we, if we look at the differences between these two types, the ESFPs, they are, you know, looking at new experiences, looking at the world as it is, and then filter <laughs> filtered into what do they like? What do they feel is good? So that's why stereotypically they can be kind of like the happy-go-lucky person who's interested in stuff like fashion or interested in things like performing, singing, acting. The ESTPs, on the other hand, they're doing that whole thing in life, looking at, looking at the world with their eyes open, just seeing it as it is, but it's going to, how can we solve problems here? So the stereotype of the ESTP is like someone who's an entrepreneur, they're in sales, they're just out there hustling, they're grinding, they're moving on from thing to thing, trying to sell stuff to different people. <laughs> you get that like, do you know, you know sales, you sell stuff to people, something that I am, I would never be good at. All right, now we're moving on to the intuitive types. I know this is the thing that everyone just skips to. Give me, give me to the intuitive types. Let's start with the introverted intuitives, the INFJ and the INTJ. Now, these types have a lot in common with those introverted sensors, the ISFJ and ISTJ that we talked about. You know how those types are keeping the sensory world organized. The INFJ and the INTJ are also trying to keep the world organized, but in an abstract sense. The introverted intuitives are, are trying to force everything into a common abstract connection, if you will. It's like this thing over here in life, you know, this maybe sensory experience, this fact or whatever, is just like this other thing in some way. They have this one common thing and it's it's the same pattern it's always trying to like simplify things and be reductive and in a practical sense i think these types are really try <laughs> trying to figure out these patterns so that they can then skip over like that that sensory grinding you know having to actually do work they can just be like okay i see how this all works from this top down level so now i can kind of cut some corners and you know skip ahead now you might think that there is some relation here to think Thinking, like intuition and thinking like sometimes feel like they're overlapping a little bit and maybe that's partially my imprecise use of language but intuition isn't necessarily trying to figure things out it is just observing things and then making connections between them the thinking is where we like really put together the puzzle right just want to clarify that the introverted intuitives man just all the time without realizing it I've talked about this many times on my channel before but their mind is like a funnel like everything in the world goes into the top side of the funnel and then they're trying to reduce it to like this one intuitive meaning. And it's like, oh, okay, I can force everything to fit through this. I can f force this square peg through this round hole. And of course, they're doing it as a way of trying to avoid dealing with new stuff in this in the real physical world. They're trying to be like, these, these things in the physical world aren't really different, uh, I can intuitively see how they're the same thing. So then slight differences between these two types, the INFJs, stereotypically what? Like a, a psychologist, a counselor, hypnotherapist, uh, illusionist? It's because they're using those patterns to understand people and their emotions. And so then that allows them to get inside the, the psyche 
of other people, perhaps even using it for manipulation. The INTJs, they are maybe what? More stereotypically like some kind of uh, entrepreneur. Not just any entrepreneur, but the kind who has like this business plan that goes 10 years in the future and they've figured out every little thing and it's like, here's how I can work as little as possible to get this thing done. The INTJs are all about, let me work smarter, not harder. And maybe that's why they are sometimes cited statistically as the type that makes the most money. I don't know. Okay, now we move on to the extroverted intuitives, the ENTP and the ENFP. Man, these types are just always in the mindset of what are all the possibilities here? What about this? What about that? What about this other thing? They're projecting intuitively out into the future by, you know, taking guesses at what could happen. They kind of see the patterns of what's happening and then be like, well, this pattern could lead here or could lead here or here or here or here. There's all these possibilities, oh my gosh. And they love doing that. They love just looking at all the possibilities. They're kind of doing like the opposite of what the introverted intuitives are. So while they are trying to be reductive and like, you know, take everything down into uh, like one intuitive meaning, the INTJs and INFJs, the ENFPs and ENTPs are like going from one little thing in the real world, one or two things, and being like, here's a million different connections, here's a million different things that this could mean intuitively. Isn't that cool? Isn't that awesome that we're not, <laughs> we don't have any finality, that we're just going further and further and further out into the web of ideas? These types are just naturally always being creative and seeing new sides of things, things that other people didn't think of. Uh, so some differences between these two types, the ENFPs, they're doing all of this exploration, if you will, for the sake of what they like, what they think is cool, what, the, what they think is good. That's what really is driving them. So ENFPs are stereotypically like the goofball, funny, cool guy who's got like this, this kind of crazy imagination. The ENTPs, on the other hand, are doing all of that intuitive generating for the sake of like solving some problems, man, getting those puzzles fit together. And that's why their stereotype is like the debater because they'll be like, oh yeah, well you have that logical argument, but what about this other possibility? And I can argue that too. I can figure out how that could make sense. Let, let, let me explore that. Let me pick apart what you're saying and look at it from this other angle. Both of these types have very quick minds in terms of all the possibilities they're able to generate, all the connections that they can find between things. So there you have it. Watch another video right here or watch the whole playlist right here. Thanks so much for watching. And until next time, stay cool and attractive.